This is the word to go, yo. Go, yo. Well, hello, hello. Hi, ladies. Hello. 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 Go Here we are it. on God TV. Hello, bitches. Welcome. <laughs> God TV. Make sure you hit those thumbs because we love it when you do that. Mm-hmm. Like this video. I'm just doing it like totally instructional style right here. Cool. You know, subscribe. It's a little box. It's in the corner. It says subscribe today because you don't want to miss any of our episodes. You go back, watch hella um, other episodes with some awesome, Trying. awesome guests. We've yeah. had so many. And, and last but not least, of course, our favorite part. Bell icon. Click that bell. And mine is offensively loud, so I'll just, you know. That works. Here we go. Cheers. I'm ready. Oh, my gosh. And you guys, how exciting our new YouTube subscription. Mm. Our membership. Oh, my gosh. You guys need to join. We have a lot of exclusives, a lot of little little hidden gems in there, if you will. You don't want to miss out. Nuggets. Nuggets of fun. Nuggets of fun. All the things. (laughs) All the things, all are welcome. I and don't know what to do with my hands. I never know. <laughs> You're not on fire, Ricky Bobby. God, I love that. I don't know what to do with my hand. <laughs> hey, that, that one's for Tony, by the way. Tony in the chat yes. knows. We love the hand gestures. We got to be handy yes. with me up in yes. here. Just so you know. <laughs> more jazz hands. Always more jazz Lots hands. But no, Lisa's totally right. And the thing is, with YouTube memberships, there's different tiers. You can find out what works for you. It's very exciting. But we have a guest this week, which, listen, most of our guests are wrestling related, but this sort of bridges the gap because it's a comedian that we all know and love uh, from all the way up in Canada. Oh, Canada. Uh, oh. Obviously, he's the star of Kenny versus Spenny, one of the stars. No offense there, Kenny. We know you're the other star. Uh, and I am such a fan of the show. I, of course, have been discussing with Lisa and Mickey uh, how excited we are for this guest. So without further ado, please welcome Spencer Rice, a.k.a. Spenny, to Grown Ass Women TV. Yay! Woo-hoo. Yay! Woohoo! Let's get him in. And there he is. Yay! Yay! Yay. Yay. I am oh, nice. oh, I, so I did, good. You know what? Cheers. Thank you for being here. I did warn him. I was like, I'm going to fangirl. I'm dying a little bit. So I'll, I'll let Mickey go because I can't. This is too cool. I know. Well, I, I saw what I said. I said that uh, I'm married. So I all the fangirling I, I need, I need, I need it back. <laughs> we got you, bro. We got you. Uh, oh, my gosh. Well, it's so amazing to have you on the show. I saw your message earlier about the whiskey. So I did actually I pour, <laughs> I did pour yes. a shot what, of whiskey. What kind, uh, if I may ask you? Um, Well, that's I'm so glad that you asked, because (laughs) one of our first things that we always ask on our on the show is um, who you're wearing, what you're drinking. But since you asked me, it's a salted caramel whiskey, Tennessee legend. Yeah, it's called Tennessee legend and it's a salted caramel. It's quite lovely. So I have that for you. And then I just have a glass of um, Cabernet here. (laughs) I was going to chase it with the Ab, you know right. and then i'm just wearing my two care uh two tired to care maryland shirt that oh, um yeah. my friend jessica have it got for me nice. which i love them. yeah nice so what are you doing a bit of a delay so i hope we don't talk over each other too much I'll, is no, there a, no no it's okay i just don't want to it's okay all right, what are cool. you drinking? What are you wearing? Uh, I have the bottle here. <laughs> it's empty. That was really, sorry. That was really creepy the way I said it. <laughs> what are you wearing? What are you drinking? What, you what are you, you drinking? I'm wearing oh. Costco. I, I buy a lot of clothes at Costco. I'm a very fancy boy. Um, okay. Tosh, uh, I think it's pronounced Aachen Toschen, which sounds like Yiddish, but it's not. It's, it's uh, German? Scottish. Scottish. Russian. Scottish. Scottish. Yes. <laughs> Oh. I was so close. You're close. Right. <laughs> close enough. It must be good if the bottle's gone. That's always a good sign, I think. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and I, this I, whole attire is from Costco? No, no. But I wear a lot of Costco. It's kind of a so joke. I. I, I, you know, I honestly, my wife dresses me. I have zero sense of fashion. Uh, completely none whatsoever. Uh, I, I think that I like this shirt. I don't know what it is or... Do I have to find a cargo pants a fan- from I don't know where? And yep, a black t-shirt from Costco. And a fancy hat. 
Jerry oh, Campbell. the hat. The hat is my uh, grandfather's. Uh, sorry, my <laughs> uncle, my my great uncle who just passed away maybe uh, two months ago. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. Julie Gross. Uh, his daughter is uh, my hero, Marjorie Gross. She she wrote for Seinfeld and wow. uh, Larry Sanders, and she was a stand up comic. And uh, so that's this is her dad's hat, and he was oh, a amazing. Real show busy guy so we love them. yeah it's very wow. fancy i, I love when, love when the clothing oh. has some meaning it's vintage and it's fedorable well done well done and we love costco here i will go to lisa next because lisa we're not sponsored by costco yet but lisa loves a costco moment as we i like my does. costco i like my cvs and i my, my dollar tree or my 99 cents store you know what well, i it's am dollar 25 now it's a dollar twenty five. Yeah. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah. Inflation. I, I, I was pretty pissed, but they have an app, so you get a discount on that one. <laughs> but I am drinking. <laughs> I got so cold. I wore something else. It's freezing ass cold in my apartment, you guys. I just like I couldn't do it. I just like I go, I'm freezing. And I'm just drinking my CVS. You buy six bottles, you get um 10% off. <laughs> I'm, I'm begging CVS to sponsor me here. Um, coastal <laughs> Estates. Oh, when I got this cool mug. Oh, I've had Coastal Estates before. It's okay. not bad. Oh my God, it's, this um, mug. Yeah, it's a, it, it's so funny. This whole thing, all the uh, do not do and like two mugs in the morning, one mug in the midday. It's it's pretty hilarious. I had to buy something else because I keep on drinking out of the same glass. That's great. I so, love that. Yes. So funny. Yes. By so the way, I'm Canadian and, and as a Canadian, I always uh, respect and admire America's ability to monetize virtually everything uh, that they have. <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah. It's, yes. it's one of our greatest, our greatest traits. I will tell you that I also <laughs> remembered you said uh, whiskey. So I did a little shot ski, which I will have a little bit of. It's, it's a, a little. little. <laughs> yeah. And I actually really like whiskey. Um, there's not many alcohols I don't like, unfortunately, but whiskey, my favorite is Talisker. And it's off uh, there's a Talisker yes. version. Have you had that before? Yes. It's very nice, very campfirey. And there's one called Talisker Sky that's, I guess, the Isle of Sky, which I want to say, my God, I live in the UK. You think I should know this? I think it's the, like the Isle of Sky is somewhere in Scotland. I don't know. Let the live right. chat room rip me to shreds if that's not true. I'm chasing it with a very classy rose, 595. I'm also a bargain hunter. And uh, I'm wearing, um, I went to a, um, a lunch where a friend of mine loves Karl Lagerfeld like me. So this is Karl Lagerfeld rocking out with his blingy sunglasses. Shades. Yeah. Yes. Uh, with his Fendi headband because Karl and Fendi go hand in hand. There you go. But I don't think I've ever seen you in a t-shirt. I ever. know. But I'm going to have a t-shirt. It's got to be like Karl or someone cool, right? <laughs> right. So, so let me just, since this is a lifestyle show, so apparently, yes. um, uh, there's two kinds of whiskeys, uh, single malt whiskeys. Uh, some are made from wood and others are made from peat. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what peat is, but uh, the peat stuff is uh, you really have to acquire a taste for it. Um, this is not peat, unfortunately, but uh, I've started to really get into the peat whiskey, uh, yeah. which has a totally different taste and it's delicious. Huh. And uh, my uh, I'm ready to uh, make the switch permanently. Wow. Oh, wow. How does a Gaw TV exclusive from Spain? That is. I think Pete, is. again, being in the UK and like, I've been to like Edinburgh with the whiskey tastings. I think Pete, and again, you guys, please, uh, you know, let us know in the comments in the live chat. I think Pete is like a, um, like the earth, like a dirt, like a, like a muddy kind of dirt. But I know that sounds weird, but if you like whiskey, this might be scotch. I don't know the difference between whiskey and scotch. Please let us know. But Pete means kind of like that smokier. It is an acquired taste, but yes. you're into it. Yeah, well, I'm just starting to get into it, so I'm excited mm -hmm. about it. I I just love uh, life, and I love uh, looking at different things in different ways and trying different things, and uh, so that's my next whiskey step. I love oh. that. It comes with age, right? We start experimenting yeah. with a lot of stuff. Um, you said um, this sounds Yiddish. Are you Jewish? Yes. So okay. Not, so I mean, okay. you know, not not. I'm not a practicing Jew. I'm extremely uh, uh, not religious, but very tolerant of religion, uh, as long as it doesn't uh, get in my lane. Do you know what I mean? Gotcha, um, gotcha. Gotcha. I think that we're all we're all spinning around this planet, uh, and it's a it's a crazy planet. And whatever it takes to to make you feel good is okay with me. Uh, just uh, you know, keep it to yourself and the people that yeah, like to, yeah. you know, that's that's where I stand. It's probably that. like probably better to say we're spiritual, uh, right? No, I don't Trying to cover the bases. 
No, I, I, oh. I know that I know that that's sort of like a, a sham, <laughs> but uh, I, you know, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I, I, you know, for me, I used to pray, which was odd for someone who's not religious. But for me, it was just something I did at night and it helped me uh, help me with priorities. Right. What was important in my life? What would I if praying was real, which to me it isn't to others, it may be. I don't know. Uh, whatever I said in a prayer reminded me of what was important to me at that moment that I needed to mm -hmm. uh, take care of, work on love whatever yeah. no, that's yeah. beautifully said because it's a universal thing and and to be tolerant is the most important as opposed to you know yeah. you know putting your beliefs on other people but i will tell you what i believe i believe in kenny versus spenny and i okay. am so i i'm gonna be the biggest fangirl here and uh you know telling the other girls about favorite episodes and things uh so i will tell you it's not that dissimilar to me watching wrestling so when the wrestling thing happened my sister was watching it and i'm from a family of all girls no men and, you know, I, I kind of grew up the, the girliest of my sisters. And my sister was watching wrestling and I was kind of like, well, that's boy stuff. That's athletic. I'm not sure if I like that. And then Kenny versus Spenny, my husband, who is British, I live in England, um, was watching, I mean, just laughter erupting out of the bedroom. I was like, what are you watching? And at first I was like, okay, is this sort of like, to, to, to forgive my comparison, but I'm like, is it kind of more like male humor, like jackass, that kind of thing? And I was like, I don't know. You know, I saw different things. And I just kept peeking in and being like, this is like, what's going to happen next? It was so, you know, captivating. And, and it was just so much fun and silly. But actually, the more I watched it, so effing clever. And so um, I, th I thought, if, if I may, so ahead of its time in the sense of social media and reality television and just sort of that the humor was so smart in such a silly way that I loved it. I mean, if you guys are unfamiliar, if you're watching here for the first time and you're meeting Spenny, um, and I'll get your thoughts on kind of explaining the show to people that might not know it as, as well as I do and we do, um, you know, certain, you know, competition aspects of it, Kenny versus Spenny. So, you know, one of the episodes that I love, by the way, when I saved your information, I put an octopus and a goat emoji by your name. And I think you know why. One yes. of my favorite episodes is where you had to, have an octopus on your head, like a, you know, a dead octopus. It's behind him. It's behind him. Look behind. Well, that's, that's a fake one, but yes. Oh, but that's okay. perfect. Perfect, perfect. The other one was, was you know, who, who could keep a goat, a live goat tied to you for the most amount of time. Again, silly, but it ended up being so clever and just so interesting. But if people are not familiar with the show, how would you describe Kenny versus Spenny to our audience? Well, I think, you know, I think it's a little bit of all those things. Uh, uh, I, I feel, uh, being a fan of Jackass, and I was hanging out with Steve-O not too long ago when he came here uh, touring. Uh, Johnny Knoxville liked the show at some point. Um, I think where we d diverge is that we're not a stunt thing. We are a, 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 a duo uh, that is uh, very different. Uh, we've known each other our whole lives since we were kids. Our fathers were friends. We never had a thought in the world that we would be on television or do any of that. Uh, so, so the show is much more character based, uh, really that's what, you know, people relate to Kenny or they relate to me or they hate me and they love Kenny and vice versa. Uh, and so that kind of brings them in the wrestling, uh, comparison is, is very good. Uh, first of all, at some point, I'd love to talk about wrestling with <laughs> you, you people, especially, uh, because, uh, it was a huge part of my youth. And uh, I still, to this day, uh, adore adore it as an entertainment. Uh, so the differences between wrestling and Kenny versus Spenny is is that uh, you know you guys have gimmicks. We don't really have a gimmick, believe it or not. Uh, fundamentally, when you when you peel away all the bullshit, Spenny is Spenny and Kenny is Kenny. I can attest to Kenny being Kenny because I've known him my whole life. He always cut corners. He always was clever and found ways of cheating. He always. Uh, like to shock and he was you know th that was his humor so it's a very lucky thing that we got together uh with wrestling i know i can say this now because kayfabe is over uh you know the the the, the artists and i think wrestling wrestlers are artists uh as well as athletes uh they kind of know how it's going to end where we literally didn't uh how, know where the how the competition competition was going to end and a lot of people don't believe it and they say it's fake but what we did which i think was pretty clever was in the uh, model of producing the show, we, uh, I personally was not allowed uh, and didn't want to be into in the production meetings. In other words, yeah. I would, uh, you know, come up with what I would do for the competition, hand it in. They would have a meeting. Kenny would be at the meeting because he was more of the trickster and the prankster and the cheater. Oh, yeah. uh, 
so so that my camera crew and his camera crew knew what he was going to do, but I didn't. Now, I, I knew he was going to cheat because I know him. Uh, you know, that's that's the kind of guy he is. Uh, extremely insecure. We can get into that later. But anyways, um, uh, narcissistic. I could go on for days, frankly. But uh, <laughs> the reality is because I didn't know, it just it wasn't good for the show if all I did was trying to figure out how he was going to cheat. So so my mm -hmm. job on that show was just to do what I wanted to do, what I would do if I was competing against anybody. Uh, and I knew something was coming. I never knew from what direction or where, but everybody else did. So that I think that's where we differ from uh, from wrestling. Although I'm sure there's some matches that that turn out to be quite real. Uh, I've read about them. Uh, so you know, it, it's a very lucky thing that we had because we were canceled on the national network here in Canada, but then we were picked up by a cable network, uh, and uh, we were also uh, you know uh, comedy nerds. Uh, uh, I don't know what else to say. We both loved comedy and we loved rock and roll and we loved music. Uh, so we bonded before we ever had an inkling that we'd be on television. Uh, so we just have this uh, this patter that we have that's very real. We don't try to do it. I, I mean, if anybody knew us uh, before television, there were points where people didn't want to be around Kenny and I because we were fighting so much verbally because uh, that's basically who we are. And uh, so that was lucky that we did. The whole thing was just a series of, of lucky things that happened. But we were able to deliver a pretty funny show. Uh, Kenny thinks it's the greatest show ever, but Kenny thinks anything he's involved in is the greatest thing ever. Uh, and uh, I, I'm very proud of the show. It was a horrible show to do uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, you know, you don't want to wake up in the morning and your day is going to be strapped in the 69 position to Kenny Hotz. Uh, <laughs> it smells like a dead moose on a good day. Uh, so, you know, it, it was uh, it was hard for both of us to do it. And we rode through the whatever level of fame we achieved together. And uh, we, we were best friends on top of it. So it's a very unique thing uh, that we've accomplished and very proud of it. Yeah. yeah, and the chemistry is just amazing, of course. I was just going to say the that. chemistry. It's the chemistry. Yeah, it's all about that. And I, I do like the fact that you perform organically because when I go to wrestling, they're like, when Mickey and I had to do a pre-tape just recently, I was yeah. like, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know what I'm supposed to say. I'm going to react naturally. I, I do appreciate that. But, that, you, know? you know, with wrestlers, I have such a respect for them because I, I've done my, I'm a jabroni 100%, but I've done some wrestling. But I love, because uh, it's so rare for me to be in the back. You know, and these are indie shows, right? These aren't you guys who are doing bigger stuff. But um, the way that they, they, they've done it so long and they've practiced so hard that they just sort of know how to roll with the, with the punches uh, and the kicks and everything like that and how they kind of rehearse it beforehand, but not in any detailed way. It seems very vague to me, but somehow they pull it off. I, I find it endlessly fascinating. Yeah. I know we were seeing that you had done a manager position you oh, had uh, and done some stuff in wrestling. Because well, my, my proudest, wrestling. my proudest thing I did was Ke Kenny versus Benny. We did an episode. Kenny didn't want to do it because he's not a wrestling guy. Uh, right. And he, uh, I wanted to do who could be the best professional wrestler, uh, which is let the audience in on all of it, the choreographing, <laughs> all of the stuff that goes into a wrestling match. But, you know, we're amateurs. So, you know, uh, anyhow, uh, I because uh, I was a huge fan of uh, wrestling because uh, I used to go to wrestling in Toronto, which was a huge wrestling territory uh, back mm -hmm. in the day, I believe wrestling. And uh, my hero uh, to this day is uh, Ed Fairhat, the original Sheik. Uh, and, uh, you know, and, and he, you know, there was real blood back then. Right. And mm -hmm. this was, I guess, before hepatitis and AIDS and all the reasons they don't do it now, but I insisted that I had to bleed, uh, for real. And I think I, I, I sent, uh, yes, you sent us a picture. You sure yeah. did. You did. Yeah. You did. So, you know, so that was real blood. And oddly enough, it was just such a fantasy come true for me, uh, to be able to do that, even in the you know, in the guise of a crazy, uh, you know, reality comedy show. Uh, it was a whole lot of fun uh, for me. Yeah. Wow. Yes, and yes, not to spoil wrestled, it for you. There's I've not wrestled, fake blood. We don't do fake blood. We don't do so, fake blood. So, hang on. So, so I've done some wrestling. <laughs> I wouldn't call it wrestling. I'm an old Jew. My balls are hanging down to around my knees these days. <laughs> it's not, uh, this is nothing to be proud of. But I do oh, love I love doing that. I had a little feud with a guy named Tyson Dukes, and uh, I I I, I w went into the ring with Rhino. I think I showed you a picture of that. Oh, yeah. we love yeah. both of them. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, Rhino, when I met Rhino, he was supposed to gore me and he looked at my me and said, no, I'm not goring you. <laughs> I would have completely been crushed. Um, right. But but my love of wrestling ultimately was the managers, which are pretty much gone these days. And I know some people pine for those days uh, because I loved comedy. I found the managers to be very funny. Uh, me too. You know, uh, Roth, uh, Creechman, Heenan, I could go on. They're all funny guys. I mean, yeah. by any, any stretch of the imagination. So uh, so I have a clip, I think. Is that what you're building to here, Vo? Yes, may we? We we have a we, yeah, we have a yeah. little we love a little clip to pitch to, and I was so thrilled to get this clip. So you guys have a look at Spenny as a wrestling manager. Take a look at this. It's Spenny here. I was just on the Chinlock site and see that that bum Tyson Quack Quack Ducks has done a promo about his fight, and he didn't even mention my name. Well, I don't blame him for being embarrassed after losing to me three separate times. I got so bored of it that I decided to go to Passaic, New York to the American Wrestling Manager School and in one month they gave me a certificate of excellence and I will be managing the great Tommy Dreamer and Billy Gunn as they fight against that quack quack duck Tyson and his Tarek Schmerick guy. I will be in the ring. I will be managing them. You can get you can get all kinds of stuff. You can get quack quack. Take my dad. <laughs> quack quack. <laughs> He's gonna get clobbered and pulverized by my genius men. My stable. So this is the one that you mentioned. Um, Tommy Dreamer, Tyson Dukes. You guys know Tyson as well, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, it was, uh, uh, it was Tommy. Uh, I I was managing uh, Tommy and uh, Billy Gunn. Yes. Against Tyson Dukes and his uh, tag team partner, a guy named Tarek. Uh, but when you, you know, to me, I'm just channeling uh, Eddie Creechman, uh, Roth, uh, you know, Abdullah Farouk with the gravelly boy. It's so old school and ridiculous, but I just love it. Um, and I actually want to do, and I could never find financing for it. Uh, I wrote a movie about a, a, a kid who grows up in a wrestling, kind of a wrestling family as father's a fan and he was exposed to it so much and he actually becomes a character like freddie blassie you know ernie roth all these guys as an adult and i wanted to do a sort of semi-reality comedy show where a character like that exists in the real world and we would shoot me in a grocery store or wherever i would i would be but then there would be a story tied to it so it'd be a mix of scripted and, and reality that's how much i love that those guys you know like yeah, yeah. did you ever see uh Breakfast with Blassie, you know, uh, that was another, that was a lesser yeah. known Andy Kaufman uh, thing that he did. Uh, and it was just a, a sort of a parody of my dinner with Andre with uh, <laughs> Freddie Blassie having breakfast with Andy Kaufman. And the waitress walks by and she goes, what a nice keister, you know, and that is the, <laughs> that old school, ridiculous, uh, you know, it's probably uh, very uh, uh, politically incorrect, but I find it funny. <laughs> Yeah. That's the last time you heard Keister. <laughs> Woman. Keister. Yeah. Keister. It's all in good fun, though. That's the thing. Everything's in yeah. good fun. And even if it was a little bit, you know, for example, now some things are, you know, seen in a different light. Back then, the intention was good. The intention was just for comedy and things like that. I personally, because I was never really a wrestler, I wrestled a teeny bit, bruised like a peach. It's not for me. I love the managers. I love, you know, my yeah. gosh, uh, Paul it's Heyman. Enter it's just entertainment. It's yeah. always it is entertainment. It is just entertainment and you're generating heat. And here's the thing is that too, it's like, um, I, I know what you're saying because you have to, it, it's more cautious of what you say, but where is the line of like acting and just generating heat? Because if it was to happen in a movie or a television show that was a scripted film, big budget film or whatever, no problem you would just accept it as part of the movie, right? Like it would just yeah. be part, but because it's wrestling and because there is that blend of reality versus theater, yes. of they feel like you're kind of uh, toying with reality too much. I don't understand where well, that difference lies. Like you're allowed to, you're not allowed to do it in wrestling, but you are allowed to do it in film and movies and theater and stuff. But no, those, those characters, uh, Paul Bearer, you could go through the list of them is slick. They were so over the top that it was clearly right. Act. Like I, I remember uh, Dice Clay, uh, Andrew Dice Clay, who I, who I loved and I still do love him. And it's the stupidest act ever. But he was uh, sort of almost the first comedian I know that was really there was a backlash to what he did. If you recall, one of the the women or a couple of them on Saturday Night Live wouldn't perform 
when he was hosting. And it just because he was so offensive. I did not know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, I look it up 100%. Um, I can almost remember who it is, but I can't remember. But anyways, but but what I don't understand is, uh, and I disagree with that they did that because, first of all, his real name is Andrew Silverstein. <laughs> second, second of all, he's a family guy, you know, whatever. It's an act. He's playing, uh, you know, a doofus, uh, you know, New Jersey guy. Yeah. Right. Uh, so clearly an act. Uh, but yeah, it's a different world now. Your tour starts tomorrow and I'm, jealous that it's in Canada um, and and not close to me in San Diego. So um, tell us about it. All well, it's amazing. Well, first of, first of all, uh, we twerk all through the year, basically. Uh, we both have kids and we're married, so we can't stay away for months on end or we don't mm-hmm. want to, I think is the, the right. Uh, so this tour is a Canadian tour, which is a 20th anniversary tour. And we've done the Canadian markets a million times all across the country. But the latter half of this year, we're we're really going to do the States. Uh, we've done New York. We've done uh, Philadelphia. We've done some East Coast cities, uh, but we're going to do the whole country. So you said San Diego, Lisa? Yes. Yeah, Ooh. Sure. So hey, uh, and I'm in Nashville. Yeah, yeah, come to the UK, lot. please. We implore I you. I love that you guys are all over the place. That's so cool. Uh, yeah. yeah, we're going to do every anywhere we can make a buck. That's the name of the game. And, uh, you know, uh, Austin, uh, for sure, uh, you're in Nashville. I think Nashville, uh, my my buddy lives there. So I hope uh, I hope we uh, make, make it, it there. It would be fun. You have to hit me up if you come here. Of course. Absolutely. Yeah. Even okay, if you're in LA, I that's like a three hour drive for me. I, I would drive. Oh, we're, we're doing LA for both Kenny and I lived in LA for years. So uh, oh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, and I was going to say, if you need me to do a run in, because watching the episodes, um, I had a lot of sympathy for you. I felt like Kenny was definitely the heel. And so if you needed some assistance from the champ, I'll totally kick his ass for you. Please. I thought about I, it. I sat on it. I prayed about it. And I feel like it's the right thing to do. Yeah. If Kenny was yeah. here and you said I sat on it, you can imagine what would come up. <laughs> oh, my God. So uh, <laughs> nothing would make me happier, uh, Mickey, than to watch you kick the living shit out of Kenny. Um, I'm excited about it. Yeah. Anyway, it's good. Uh, well, he'll we'll he have would, Kenny on so he can defend he would himself be if he needs to. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. Val reached you out. Might to sell me. tickets to it separately. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Andy Kaufman style. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyways, I, I, it sounds like you're wrapping this up. I, I just want to thank uh, you guys. Uh, there's nothing I love more than creative, funny women. Uh, they've been my guiding light in my creative, uh, creative life, literally uh, married to a funny woman, but she's not uh, in show business, but she's hilarious. Uh, and I just uh, really appreciate uh, being on the show with you guys. Oh, my God. We appreciate you being yeah. on the show with us. And that's Correct. so amazing for you. Like, it's just so refreshing. Can I just say personal note here? So refreshing and amazing um, just to hear you speak so kindly of your wife. And um, oh, what that was just so pleasant. It just made me smile like through and through because it's just really yeah. refreshing and nice to hear. Yeah. yeah. And well, you know, you, women as well. It's just, that's, yeah. that's, that's, you know, the, the show is honestly, the show is kind of going to be more focused on female empowerment. But the thing is working in wrestling, let's, let's face it, primarily our friends in the business are male. And then we've yeah. been so lucky, which by the way, you guys that are watching in the live chat room in the comments and everything, they've been so welcoming to like different genres that we're interested in. For example, I mentioned being a fan of RuPaul's Drag Race. We've had some stellar drag queens on the show. We love paranormal, um, you know, investigators. We've had people like that on the show. We've been able, you know, musicians. Mickey's had, my gosh, Chapel yeah. Heart, who are just blowing up the the uh, musical industry right now. The thing is, we appreciate and we have people that respect wrestling, which you've been so respectful and kind about That's our awesome. industry. Yeah, because we're such fans of yours. So any final words for your fans here? We're going to put all of the information in the description below to go see you guys on tour. Hopefully we'll have you back on the show. And we just are so excited for your success. But any final words to your fans here on YouTube? I absolutely have a final word for the fans. Anybody comes to see us live when we do the meet and greet, do not hug me. I don't want to call your brother uh, that was named after me. I don't care that your dog has cancer. Uh, be polite. Just come up, say hello. Kenny loves all that attention. I just, the, I'm just there for the dough at that point in the show. I just want to go back to the hotel and masturbate. So that's fair. Uh, wow, I might have to rethink who I thought was the heel. Yeah, <laughs> see? yeah exactly, exactly. Oh, like, you know what? He, you can tell he's like daddled in the wrestling industry because we're like going. People are like going, "Can I hug you?" And I'm like going, "Hey, 
We're getting yeah. a little too close, and yeah, yeah, too yeah. much, too much. Can you say, you know what's say weird? Hello to my to my kid. Yeah, you're just yeah. We you get know what's weird is it's when we talked about this just recently. Is when, is when people ask for a hug. That's even weirder. Like, yeah. if Can you I have to hug? ask, it's a no, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, <laughs> the, hey, Mickey, that's a whole other fucking three hour podcast. Uh, uh, whether I'm a heel or not a heel in terms of the live, <laughs> show. The, the live show is a completely different dynamic. And when you're yeah. spending, you get a lot of, uh, a lot of lies about you. A lot of it. It's all in fun, I suppose, but after years and years, it does sink in a little bit. So I have a very <laughs> complex relationship with the fans. Don't we all, but oh yeah, my God, yeah. you have been such a treat. Honestly, like, oh my gosh. like when, when your square popped up, other than maybe a drag queen or two, I have not <laughs> had such a, I was like, oh my God, I've watched you little guys. Flutter, so flutter, little flutter, flutter. A little, little flutter, flutter fangirl moment. So again, thank <laughs> you for your candor, your, your honesty. And again, I, I again, I want to reiterate, if I can say reiterate after whiskey, I think I'm doing good. Uh, <laughs> But no, but for, for your respect for wrestling as well and, and, and yeah, you being perfect. a fan of wrestling and, and so respectful about our business is really, really cool. So thank you for that. Let's do okay. a final cheers to Spenny. To By Spenny. the way, you should, get George, George, you should get George Santos on the show. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That'd be great. Let's we do got it. a lot of things to discuss. Cheers, everybody. Please subscribe. And of course, check those descriptions to follow Spenny everywhere he goes. That was Lovely great. Lovely ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. We really appreciate oh it. This is the word. Go, yo, go.